who are raised right here. These lines swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be done. Yes, I do. Do you enjoy coercing minors into sex acts with you? Do you agree that you exchange money for sexual gratification with at least 50 girls at your Palm Beach mansion? At the present time, my attorneys have counseled me that I cannot provide answers to any questions relevant to this lawsuit. To understand this story, you really have to understand Palm Beach. Palm Beach is a playground for the rich. Visually, Palm Beach is stunning. It's a long and skinny island. Some of the most expensive houses, mansions, beautiful boutiques. There is a street called Worth Avenue where all the expensive stores are. The cars are outstanding. The Bentleys, the Rolls, the, the Ferraris, you name them. The norm there in Palm Beach, you're not a millionaire, you're a billionaire. But of course, it's not the real world. You know, the real world is crushing poverty less than 30 minutes away from the island of Palm Beach. Once you cross the bridge, you know, it's a whole different world. The girls that were involved in this, they really could not have been more separated and different from the world of Palm Beach. They're living in trailer park homes. Some of them had probably never even been to the island. The targets the victims were as vulnerable as you could possibly be. If they were the daughters of bankers and lawyers and doctors in Palm Beach, this would have never occurred. Do you know somebody by the name of Courtney Wilde? I'm Courtney Wilde and I'm 31 years old. When I was young, my parents weren't around. I was living at a friend's house. It was just a hard time in general, but I was actually a very good student, straight A's and B's. I played the trumpet. I was on the cheerleading squad. I love school. Isn't it true that you were targeting young, economically deprived minor girls with little or no parental guidance? My name is Jenna Lisa Jones. My 14-year-old self was very lost and broken, very impressionable. My mom was very bad into drugs. I wasn't going to school. I was kind of on my own. Isn't it true that you typically engaged in sex or sex acts with minor girls three or four times each day? My name is Michelle Licata. We had a fun childhood. We were a really big family. It's my birthday, not Joey's, not Mikey's, not Cody's. It was me and my five brothers, and I have a sister, and there was never a dull moment. Michelle, before all of this happened, she was the all-American uh, dream child. I love you, Mom. She did cheerleading. Very active very athletic. I was a pretty happy person. There was a short period where I wanted to be like a firefighter. I always wanted to help people. I always wanted to save somebody. When you listen to the stories of how Courtney, Jenna, Lisa, and Michelle first got involved with Epstein, they're eerily similar, even though they happened at different times. I was 14 years old. Me and my girlfriend went to a middle school party, and we got approached by one of our fellow friends. She knew a guy in Palm Beach that we could give massages to, and we could make $200. A friend told me about her friend from school that is super popular, and she's like, they're having a little get together, hanging out, and one of the girls starts talking about a guy named Jeff and how easy it was um, to go make some money. I was 16 years old. There was a girl that I knew that I thought was a friend of mine, and she just was writing me a note. She asked if I wanted to make uh, some money, just have to massage some old dudes in like a facility type setting. He's just a dirty old man. It will be 200 bucks. It'll probably be 20 minutes. Not a big deal. Yeah. Oh, I try this again. 
because Christmas was right around the corner. Being one out of seven kids, I wanted to get everybody a present. So I told her I would love to make some extra money. $200 to me was a lot of money. $200 meant I could go to the mall with my friends if I wanted to. $200 meant that I could have food for the week. And you don't have to tell anybody about your $200. She was saying he's going to ask you to take your shirt and your pants off. Uh, but don't worry, you can keep your underwear and your bra on. And I just remember thinking, like, OK, well, you know, I go to the beach uh, in a bathing suit, and that shouldn't be that big of a deal. She's like, yeah, he might make you take your shirt off, but it's not a big deal. He just likes to look. I really hadn't exposed myself like that before. I still went in the bathroom to change in front of my girlfriend, so I was very, very worried. For some reason, I was told that he was like a brain surgeon. He was a doctor of some sort. I knew he had money. I just had, I had no idea who he was, though. So. The popular girl, she started dressing me, doing my hair, doing makeup. Jenilise is using the phrase, the popular girl, because she doesn't want to directly identify the person who recruited her. I was so underdeveloped and younger looking that he was going to like that, is pretty much what she told me. She's like, he's going to think you're beautiful. And you're just like, all right, guess we're going to do this. A cab came to her house and picked us up. And I just remember going over the bridge at that time. It's like almost like an awestruck of just the nice houses, the beautiful boats in the water as you're driving by. The ocean was on the left, and all the streets were on the right. And one of the streets' signs said Bravo. And I just remember repeating it in my head over and over and over again, like Bravo, Bravo. And I was just thinking of like, movie stars. As we were getting closer and closer is when I started wondering, like, well, where are we? Why are we pulling into someone's house? At this time, I still thought that I was going to, like, a building of a bunch of old guys. I was excited because this popular girl's taking me into a, a whole nother world that I had never been into. I started to get really, really nervous. I was freaking out. My heart was starting to race. That feeling you get where you know something bad is about to happen, it's like a car accident. You see it coming, but you can't stop anything that's going to happen, because it's just going to hit you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.